Hey, what's up guys? It's Hazard. I'm a fighter pilot for the Air Force. Today we're going to be talking about do fighter pilots stick with the same jet throughout their whole career? All right, the short answer is it depends. Let's first talk about the two broad categories of pilots. So you have the heavies. Those are the pilots that are flying the tanker aircraft, the transport aircraft, and then you have fighter pilots. Fighter pilots are flying the F-16s, the F-35s, the F-22s, etc. So rarely do those pilots cross streams. A heavy pilot is not gonna fly fighters. Fighter pilot is generally not gonna fly heavies. Now I have a friend who was an F-16 pilot, got done with his active duty career. So uh, active duty, you have a commitment of 10 years post UBT, undergraduate pilot training. So as soon as you get your wings, you owe the Air Force 10 years. So he completed that and then he decided that location was more important to him and so he got hired by a guard C-17 squadron, and now he's flying C-17s. So the guard, for those people that don't know, that's essentially the state's miniature Air Force. So when most people think of the Air Force, they're thinking active duty. Now the guard, you're being hired by a specific base to fly a specific type of aircraft. And I know that I had no idea what the guard was going through the academy and then showing up to UPT. And then the guy next to me, he knew he was going to fly A-10s. So that kind of, that blew my mind at the time. So guard is a great option as active duty. We're moving around about every three years or so. Guard pilots are going to stay in the same location for the rest of their career. Recently, I have a friend who is in pilot training with me. He moved from bombers to getting hired by a guard F-16 squadron. So it is technically possible, but I definitely would not count on being able to switch from heavies to fighters or fighters to heavies. All right, so let's talk about within the fighter community, do people move jets? The answer is it depends on the needs of the Air Force. It really depends on what the Air Force is doing. And because the Air Force is governed by civilians, by politics, it changes all the time. So if you're one of those people that know that you're gonna fly the F-16, then fly the F-35, then some other next generation aircraft, and then be an astronaut and a test pilot, you're really setting yourself up for failure. Now you wanna work as hard as you can, but let me share a secret. Low expectations are the key to happiness. So just work as hard as you can, and then just be happy with whatever you're doing. And generally, most pilots are happy with whatever airframe they're in. So you'll learn to love it. And over the 10 years that I've been in the Air Force, I've seen the Air Force shift quite a bit. So when I first joined the Air Force, times were pretty lean for fighter pilots. There were not a lot of spots and the top few people from bases were getting selected to stay in the jet. So all fighter pilots, they want to stay in a fighter aircraft, but it was really only the top one or two people staying in a fighter. The rest were going to white jet tours, teaching students how to fly the T-38, or to gray jet tours, teaching students how to fly the T-38 tactically at IFF, or to ALO tours, air liaison officers really integrating with the troops on the ground, or I have some friends that went and had to fly uh, RPA, so remotely piloted aircraft. So times are pretty tough. And then for the bulk of my career, times have been great, actually unprecedented. Uh, almost everybody I know has stayed in the jet. And I recently had a chance to sit down with the 19th Air Force commander, and he was saying that times are gonna get tough for fighter pilots again, because the Air Force always has the chicken and the egg problem. Do you wanna use your fighter pilots right now uh, to augment your strategic capability, or do you want fighter pilots to help make better pilots and more pilots at UPT? So right now we have C-17 pilots that are teaching you know, future fighter pilots how to fly like a fighter pilot in the T-38, which obviously isn't ideal. So we're gonna have fighter pilots move to that, which in some ways makes sense. That being said, you know, I'm in the cheap seats, I'm in the reserves flying the F-35 and I'd be pretty disappointed if I had to drag my family to these UPT bases, which are really in the middle of nowhere and teach students how to do TP stalls. It also depends on the new fighters that are coming online for the Air Force. So if you were a F-16 pilot in the 90s or early 2000s, you were gonna stay on that jet because there wasn't anything new on the horizon. Now some of the pilots went off to fly the F-22, but that was pretty rare. For me, uh, you know, after flying the F-16 for six years, I had a chance to go to a lot of advanced exercises and really see the writing on the wall that fit-gen fighters, F-22, F-35, they're really the future. We're moving from more of a uh, coin, counter, insurgency, 
war to a high-end conflict of near-peer adversaries. And that's where Fitchin fighters really earn their money. And so the timing really worked out well for me. They were accepting experienced pilots. I was an instructor in the F-16, so kind of the hierarchy is wingman, flight lead, instructor. So they were looking for experienced instructor pilots to move to the F-35, and I happened to fit that bill. But in 2018, that changed. So we now have brand new pilots out of UPT, that's again, pilot training, that are learning how to fly the F-35. And that's a huge jump to go from flying the T-38, which is a trainer built back in the 50s, to flying the newest, most sophisticated aircraft out there. But really the Raptors F-22s paved the way for this. So about a decade ago, they used to send new pilots to the F-16 for I think it was six rides, just so that they could prove they knew how to refuel and to handle the Gs, and then they would move on to the F-22. Now that proved to be inefficient, so they moved on to having pilots go straight to the Raptor, and we've used a lot of their lessons learned uh, in the F-35. Also, simulator technology has gotten great, so we haven't had any issues with pilots making that jump. But I would suspect that those new pilots going to fly the F-35, they're gonna stick with the F-35 for the rest of their career, because it's really intensive for the Air Force, and it's really intensive individually to learn how to fly a new aircraft. So it takes about a year, year and a half to really be proficient in the new airframe because you're talking about unlearning a lot of things that for me, I learned in F-16 and then being able to learn all the new switches, all the new capabilities in the F-35. And, you know, I can remember, you know, I knew what I wanted to do because I was an experienced fighter pilot, but it would take me about five seconds to figure out how to do it through the HOTAS, the hands-on throttle and stick. And at the speeds we fly, we're averaging closure rates of a mile every three seconds. So that was way too slow. So it took me about a year and a half to transition. And so that 35, we have former A-10 pilots, uh, Strike Eagle pilots, Sea model pilots, a lot of Viper pilots, uh, even some F-22 pilots and some people who are on their third airframe. So I know a couple guys that flew the F-16, went to the Raptor, now flying the F-35. So it's really a good uh, you know, melting pot of different tactics and different communities all coming together. And then another time that pilots are gonna switch jets is when they become a senior leader. If you're gonna become a colonel, an 06, and then go command a base, now those are pretty rare positions. So if you're an F-16 pilot, you're probably gonna accept that assignment even if they're flying F-35s. Now you need to know how to advocate for your people and fly those aircraft. So you're gonna go through what's called a SOC, a senior officer course. And that's just a really quick course to get you spun up so that you can go command your base and advocate for your people. And you're not gonna be super tactical, but generally tactics fall on the captains and majors anyway. So there you go, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like it, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll talk to you next time.